Hi, I'm Bob. Let's complete the computer exercises together for Chapter Five: Multiple Regression Analysis (OLS) Asymptotics. I use data to solve the computer exercises. You can download the datasets and do files from the link below. For the first computer exercise. We regress the hourly wage on education, experience, and tenure. We save the residuals using the predict. To command with the residuals option, we give the residuals the name RIS1. We type histogram RIS1 to draw histogram plots. The normal option adds a normal density to the graph. We can save the graph for later use. Then we repeat the process using the log of hourly wage. As the outcome variable, next we compare the two histograms using the graph combine command. We put them in one column. We see that the histogram from the level-level model is right skewed, with a long tail on the right hand side. It is quite common that the wage distribution is right skewed because a few people earn very high wages, while most people have moderate salaries. The mean is pulled to the right of the median. The residuals from the log level model are more likely to have a normal distribution. In other words, the assumption multiple linear regression number six is closer to being satisfied for the log level model. The second exercise is about equation five point ten. From this approximation, we can predict that the standard error ratio is about 0.71. Let's verify. Let's verify it using data. The first regression with the entire sample gives a standard error of 0.0005495. We save it as a scalar. Then. We re-estimate the equation using the first 2,070 observations. In data, we use the if modifier to choose the observations used in the regression. Underscore small n is the current observation number. To choose the first 2,070 observations, we type if. Underscore small n is less than or equal to two thousand and seventy. We also store the standard error. Next, we compute the ratio of the standard errors. It is zero point seven six, which is close to zero point seven one from the equation. The third computer exercise is about the Lagrange multiplier statistic for exclusion restrictions. We regress the restricted model and save the residuals. To ensure we use the same number of observations as in the unrestricted model, we can check the number of observations in the unrestricted model by running the model first. 
it is 1,191. Then we can run the restricted model using this sample size by typing if e sample. It tells data to use the same observations as in the last regression. The exclusion restrictions are that the two parent education variables are zero. So the restricted model does not contain the two parental education variables. We save the residuals using the predict command with the residuals option. Next, we regress the residuals on all the explanatory variables in the unrestricted model, including the two parent education variables. The textbook calls it an auxiliary regression. We can obtain the R squared from the regression and compute the LM statistic, the sample size times the R squared. The R squared is about 0 0.0024 and the LM statistic equals 1,191 times 0 0.0024, which is 2.86. Actually, we can use the E return list command to find the stored results after an estimation. The sample size is stored in E n and the r squared is stored in er2. We can type displayed en times er2 to compute a more accurate lm statistic. It is 2.88. Next, we compare the lm statistic with the critical value in a chi-squared distribution with two degrees of freedom. The 10% critical value with two degrees of freedom is 4.61. 2.88 is smaller than 4.61, so we could not reject the null hypothesis that the two parental educational factors do not affect the tri-birth weight after controlling for the other three variables in the model. Even better, we can obtain the p-value of the LM statistic which is 0 0.24. We fail to reject the null hypothesis at the 20% level. It implies that the parents' education variables are jointly insignificant, even at the 20% level. Let's go to computer exercise number four. First, we manipulate the data and keep the observations with family size equal to 1. Following the instructions in the exercise, we construct the standardized variable z. The sample mean and standard deviation can be obtained using the summarize command. The return list shows the stored results. Next, we generate the variable z to the power of 3. We use the summarize command again to find its sum. Finally, we compute the skewness measure. Or we can find the mean of z to the power 3 directly, which is the skewness measure. For the level of income, it is 1.86. We do the same for the log of income. The skewness measure is 0 0.36. It is much smaller. The income level has more skewness and therefore is less likely to be normally distributed. 
The transformation to the log income helps the variable display a more normal distribution. In the second part, we compare the birth weight and the log of birth weight. When we look at the histogram plots, we find that the birth weight variable seems more normally distributed than its log term. Let's compute the skewness measures for them as in part 1. The measure is minus 0 0.6 for the birth weight level and it is minus 2.95 for the log of birth weight. So the level term is more likely to be normally distributed. We can directly find the skewness measures from the stator command summarize with the detail option. The answer to part 3 is the statement is false. It's not always, but it's true for household income or hourly wages. For the last part, what matters is the error terms distribution, that is, the conditional distribution, after ruling out the effects of the explanatory variables. Now let's find answers to the computer exercise number 5. We can use the stator command tabulate to find the categories of the variable. The education level takes on 15 different values. It contains two fewer values to become a continuous variable. In the second part, we draw the histogram plots using the histogram command with the normal option. It does not appear to be a normal distribution. The normality assumption, multiple linear regression number 6, is violated. The T and F statistics do not have a T and F distribution. We cannot perform the exact T and F tests in a small sample. Instead, the statistical inference is based on asymptotic analysis. Finally, we reach the last computer exercise. For the first question, logically, the variable score can take on values from 0 to 100. In the sample, the smallest value is 19.53 and the largest is 98.44. For the second question, we see that the score variable is not normally distributed. The summarize command with the detail option also shows that it is left skewed. The error terms distribution is very likely to be not normal. If the normality assumption is violated, the t statistic does not have a t distribution and the inference is invalid in a small sample. We run the regression and find that the t statistic for beta 3 hat is 0 0.47. The p value is 0 0.64. It means the ACT English is not significant at any reasonable level after controlling for the other two explanatory variables. In large samples, the OLS estimators are asymptotically normally distributed. The T and F tests are valid in the sense of large sample size and asymptotic analysis. Thank you very much for learning introductory econometrics and doing the computer exercises with me. See you soon. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.